What is more terrifying than death itself? Climbing to the top of the world only to be stuck forever in ice. Everest, the roof of the earth, where science mysteries and tragedy intertwine. At 8,848 meters, oxygen is only one-third, and the temperature drops to minus 40 degrees Celsius. Over 200 bodies remain, haunting proof of the terrifying Mount Everest deaths. These painful stories are scientific lessons about the limits of survival. The opening tragedy, Francis Arsentia. Francis, 40 years old, an American climbing Everest with no oxygen, no Sherpa, no radio. On May 17, 1998, she and her husband, Sergei, began their insane attempt to conquer Mount Everest. Her ambition, to become the first American woman to achieve the impossible. But Everest does not forgive mistakes. This tragedy would shake the world. And before fate struck, there had already been a strange warning from her own family. The night before his mother's climb, Francis's 11-year-old son burst into tears. I dreamed that you and dad were trapped on the mountain. An unknown fact that chills the spine. Science says dreams reflect our unconscious fears, but at that moment, Francis only smiled and comforted him. No one knew that dream would painfully come true, marking the start of a chain of Mount Everest deaths that haunt history. And it all began the moment Francis reached the summit. At 1430 on May 22nd, Francis reached the summit, 30 minutes later than the safe turnaround time. At 8,848 meters, every minute of delay is a gamble with life. Lack of oxygen leads to brain swelling and cognitive impairment, a living testament to science. Everest is where glory and horror coexist. You see the summit, but not the abyss waiting below. Descending in the deadly night, they stepped straight into the spiral of life and death. Would you dare go back into a snowstorm to find the one you love? Sergei did. As night fell, Francis and Sergei became separated. He made it back to camp safely, but she was stuck in the minus 40 degree night. Sergei carried oxygen and climbed back up to find his wife, but then he too disappeared. At 8,000 meters, exhaustion and disorientation can mean death in just a few hours. Everest turned love into a painful tragedy and this heartbreaking story was only the beginning. Another story, Francis was found in a position as if she were sleeping. Winds at minus 40 degrees Celsius, her skin pale and frozen, yet her face looked peaceful. The brain deprived of oxygen creates a burning hallucination, causing her to remove her clothing, a phenomenon science calls paradoxical undressing. This image gave her the nickname Sleeping Beauty, a haunting horror symbol for climbers, but Everest holds many other chilling tales, like David Sharp, the most controversial death in history. What would you do if you saw someone stuck and dying, but saving them could mean your own death? In 2006, David Sharp, a 34-year-old English climber, ascended Mount Everest alone. He sat huddled in the Green Boots Cave at minus 20 degrees Celsius, more than 40 people passed by. Some tried to help, but he was too weak. Others assumed he was already dead. This was a terrifying moral dilemma, save or survive. Everest sometimes forces people into cruel choices. Why is everything above 8,000 meters called the death zone? Low pressure reduces blood oxygen, causes brain swelling, thickens blood, and the body begins to self-destruct. Every step feels like running a marathon in a vacuum. These are science mysteries, but they have been proven true. Everest exposes the biological limits of humans and shows why survival is nearly impossible when mistakes happen. Hannelor Schmatz is the next chilling example. Would you be afraid to encounter a ghost on the climb? Hannelor. A German climber died in 1979, just 100 meters from camp. Her body sat leaning against her backpack, eyes open, hair blowing in the wind. For many years, climbers recalled the horror they felt passing by. A chilling, unknown fact. 
The freezing temperature prevents the body from decomposing, turning it into a tragic marker. Everest is cold not only from snow, but from the haunting eyes that linger for those who follow. At an altitude where every breath is a battle, Rob Hall still kept his promise. This New Zealand guide refused to leave his client Doug Hansen in the blizzard, even though he knew the chance of survival was nearly impossible. His last words over the radio, I love you, sent to his pregnant wife, left the world in silence. This was not only a painful tragedy, but also a science mystery about human psychology. Love can be stronger than the instinct to survive. Yet Everest remained merciless, and that year Rob was not the only one to fall. A legend of climbing without oxygen like Scott Fisher seemed invincible, but science shows that in the death zone, no one is immune to oxygen deprivation. After rescuing many other teams, he became exhausted, lost body heat, suffered burning hallucinations, and removed his jacket, a condition explained by medicine as thermoregulation disorder. The storm swept through and Scott passed away, proof that Mount Everest deaths do not distinguish between the strong and the weak. From Rob to Scott, each painful death holds unknown facts about the limits of biology. It is not only legendary climbers who face tragedy. Shreya Sharma, a Canadian of Nepalese descent, spent $100,000 on her summit attempt. But science proves that money cannot buy oxygen or endurance. On the way down, she suffered brain swelling and a blizzard struck. Another painful tragedy in the chain of Mount Everest deaths. Everest, this mountain, does not care if you are rich or poor. It is fair in one way. Those who do not respect biological laws will pay the price. Why do so many die even after reaching the summit? Scientific statistics. 90% of Mount Everest deaths occur during descent. When dopamine floods the brain after reaching the summit, judgment fails. This is the summit fever syndrome. Science calls this cognitive impairment caused by oxygen deprivation. You see the glory, but not the abyss right beneath your feet. A psychological and physiological phenomenon that few notice. But it is the cause of many tragic horrors. And in the year 2024, Joshua Cheruyo became the latest victim of this deadly mix of euphoria and exhaustion. Joshua, from Kenya, dreamed of becoming the first African to conquer Everest without oxygen. Just 50 meters from the summit, he refused the spare bottle. Science warns, above 8,000 meters, every brain cell begins to die. Joshua collapsed in an ice crevasse, a horror and painful scene that shocked the world. An insane tragedy, ambition colliding with biological limits. From here, the question arises, why is climbing without oxygen so dangerous? Science has a clear explanation about the boundaries of the human body. Only 2% of Mount Everest climbers succeed without oxygen. At this altitude, the resting heart rate is like sprinting, blood thickens, and the risk of brain swelling and pulmonary edema skyrockets. Science explains, low pressure causes oxygen in the blood to plummet. Hallucinations make climbers easily stuck and disoriented. Survival is nearly impossible without strict preparation. Everest becomes even more terrifying when those who fall remain forever on this mountain, becoming a living warning. More than 200 bodies still lie along the climbing routes, eerie landmarks guiding those who follow. An unknown fact, the deep sub-zero temperature prevents decomposition, creating a chilling horror scene. Each body is a painful story, a reminder of the price of ambition. The science mysteries here are not only about the harsh climate, but also about moral questions. Should they be moved or left to rest in peace? David Sharp became the most heated symbol of this ethical struggle. On Everest, saving someone can mean dying with them. David Sharp and many others were left behind because of the principle of survival. This is a science mystery about humanity. When the brain is deprived of oxygen, the survival instinct overpowers morality. Mount Everest deaths are not only caused by storms or cold, but also by these painful decisions. But Everest is only a mountain. It kills no one. It is human mistakes and human limits that create tragedy. So, how can we reduce the risk of disaster? 
The mountain has no intention to kill anyone. It is carelessness, lack of preparation, and biological limits that cause climbers to perish. Not calculating oxygen, not turning back at the right time, these insane mistakes lead to Mount Everest deaths. Science gives us data, wind speed, oxygen levels, safe turnaround times, but the decisions still lie with humans. So, how do we increase the chance of survival? The answer lies in scientific preparation, combining technology with field experience. Science and technology are the strongest weapons against the death zone. Altitude acclimatization, using Sherpas, radios, storm forecasts, backup oxygen tanks, all increase survival. Everest is the ultimate biological test. Science cannot eliminate risk, but it can significantly reduce the chance of death. This is not only climbing experience, but a lesson for every field of life. Proper preparation helps conquer challenges once thought impossible. And there remains one final great question. Everest, where glory and death walk side by side, poses the final question. What do you choose? To climb and satisfy ambition, or to stop and live? The science mysteries, unknown facts, and tragedies on this summit remind us. Respect the limits. Everest is not just a mountain. It is a mirror reflecting the essence of humanity. If you were there, in the blizzard with death close by, would you dare to push on? Or would you turn back to keep writing the story of your life?